that tells us that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Yeah. I believe tonight that we need to get back to preaching about the blood. I know that there are some critics of Christianity who would say that, well, you know, I don't, uh, there, there are even some churches who say we don't want to sing about the blood and we don't want to talk about the blood. But I'm telling you tonight, there is still power, power, yeah. wonder working yeah. power yeah. in the precious blood yeah. of the Lamb. Yeah. Why? This gospel is a book of blood and it is a bloody book from cover to cover, from the uh, animals that were slain to cover the nakedness of Adam. Adam and Eve to the animals that were uh, slain here in the text of the spotless lamb that was taken and uh, the blood applied to the doorpost of the children of Israel. On and on and on and on again, you will find a bloody book and a book that is filled with blood. The scripture said the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I'm telling you the life of the gospel itself is in the yeah. blood yeah. of Jesus. Without the blood we have no gospel at all. I, I'm concerned in the church that we have come to a time where uh, we are excited about Pentecostalism and we should be. I think it is wonderful. I endorse it. I'm proud to be a member of the church of God and uh, filled with His Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and I think that is wonderful but I believe that we have forgotten that before you can have Pentecost you must first have a Passover. Yes. I touched on that a little bit last night, but it was at Passover that the blood was shed. And, and, and before there, there was ever a Pentecost, there had to be a Passover. Pentecost happened 50 days from Passover instantaneously and on its own. And if there is no real Passover experience, there can be no real Pentecostal experience. Pentecost is an automatic follow-up of a blood atonement experience that will happen in the life of every believer. Let me tell you something. It is God's will after you get saved and the blood of Jesus is applied to your life after you've experienced a personal Passover. It is God's will for you to experience a personal Pentecost where He fills you with His Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, we've got to get back to preaching the gospel. We don't need to alter it. We don't need to change it. We don't need to repair it. It is all by itself able to save from the guttermost to the uttermost. Makes no difference tonight if you're bound by drugs. Makes no difference tonight if you're bound by alcohol. I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus is powerful enough to avail for you. It'll wash the dirtiest and highest and sinners and make them clean and wider than snow. I'm telling you, there is no good, there is no deliverance through good works. There is no deliverance through good ideas or good philosophies or 12 steps or 5 steps or 10 steps. It takes one step under a fountain yeah. drawn from Emmanuel's pain, one step under that fountain, yeah. and you lose all of your guilty state. The hemologist said it well when he said there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from the veins of Emmanuel, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. I'm telling you, if it were not for the blood, there'd be empty Tonight. There'd be no preacher to preach tonight. 